Good evening. Recently, I've been trying to find a safe place to have baptisms where more than two people could come. So we ended up out in the memorial garden. A little breeze going through there, fresh air, and with masks, it felt fairly safe. And part of the baptismal ceremony is we get to the names of all the saints. It's a real short little litany of the saints. And I can think of no more, more appropriate place when you think about it than out in Memorial Garden, because on the wall in the garden are all of our personal saints, those people we loved and cared for who are no longer with us. And part of our celebration this evening is to remember those people, to remember the people who've gone before us, the people who created a safe place for us to live, who are there to take care of us, who stood by us through all different trials, both in good times and in bad. So it's important to remember them. It's important to celebrate their their presence with us in a special way, which is what All Saints and All Souls Day is all about. So we welcome you here this evening as we remember those who've gone before us, our saints, as we celebrate the fact that those saints created or tried to create with us the beloved community, the community of believers. The community is the church. Ordinarily, we'd be out in the garden with a great bonfire, but tonight we have a, a flaming bowl of light filled with candles. And we always brought, brought, began our service by listening to the dedicatory poem that Roger Dick originally wrote for the garden. And we listen to it again tonight as J.P. Fitzgibbons reads it to us. The Garden. I went to the garden today to touch your name and remember 
In gardens, perhaps, heaven itself touches earth, the nearest we come to heaven on earth. The old story says that in the beginning there was a garden where time itself began and God walked in the cool of the day. Maybe heaven itself is a garden. Otherwise, why call it by that old Persian name for a walled garden? Paradise. Like that first garden, this garden too was created by love. Here, where you wished to be, nestled beneath a wall of the church you loved, embraced by those you embraced, cared for by those you cared for, we in your presence, you in ours. Now community is complete, the circle unbroken. For love stronger than death can breach this great wall. You on that side of the wall, among spruce and pine, azalea and birch, coral bell and coneflower, learning the silence of flowers, the great patience of trees. You can hear from beyond the wall children at family mass, choir practice in the evening dark, the hum of voices at soup suppers. And we, this side the wall, know you are there. In long spring rains, when bud and blossom burst on warm summer nights, under an October moon, in the rustle of leaves, or a hushed snowfall. It is well wrought, this garden. It becomes you, this living memorial. And God is in the garden. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mary and Joseph,
Stephanie Cady, Catherine Klein, Ruth Mary Kramer, Dorothy Lawson, Bill Leach, Richard Little, Roberto Longless, Pedro Lopez, Lua Nyberg, Lowell Olson, Warren Olson, Charlotte Ann Phillip, Nicole Reed, Michael George Ropeham, Hey Samuelson, Francis Shepherdson, Bruce Stephan, James Stella. Fiona Taylor, Kenny Terhart, Echo Thorin, Jesus Tuhu, Terry Underhill, Carol Von Hoff, John Washington, Naomi, and Woolsey, Pat West, Kurt Youngren, Donald Zekrodeski, Saved us all, Paulin. Saved Leonard. Saved Welcome to St. Joan of Arc as we celebrate all saints. As you know, we, we just had our litany of saints the names are sung and read of those people who in the past year from our congregation and member and relatives of our congregation who have died. On this festival day in which we celebrate all of those who have gone before us, for those are saints, both the saints that were declared such by the church and the saints we know to be saints, those people who made our life a better for having been here, gave us life. We started out, as we always do, in the Memorial Garden, although this year we couldn't be there because of the snow. So we tried to recreate that here in the church itself, in which we call out those names that are so important to us, especially all the names of those who died this past year. Just want to add the fact that we did uh, miss and maybe mispronounce two names, and that is Charlotte McCann Phillips, and also for uh, Julia Goldman. We remember them as we do all of our dead and those who are alive in Christ. As you probably know, the church often puts festivals during seasons that match whatever we are celebrating. In this case, as we say goodbye to the light, we say goodbye to the daylight going into winter. We remember those who've died, remember those who've gone to sleep, we often talk about this as thin times, the time in which the space, the veil between those who have died and those who are living seems to be much, much shorter. But it's also, we, in the spring, we also celebrate new birth, new life, the coming back to life. And the celebration that we have with all saints is that coming back to life, that they too, like Mary, will partake of the resurrection, that like Jesus himself, they too will be re re reconnected with life and we'll all be 
together in what is often called that celestial meal, the great gathering of all the saints. So we welcome you here today as we come to St. Joan of Arc, and, as all, and we welcome you wherever you're on your journey, and we begin as we always do, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we begin our celebration, let us call to mind our need for God's goodness, God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. To my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. As we begin this celebration of our new rebirth, let us together give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone, are the, you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints. Bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Should please be seated for the liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of Revelations. I, John, saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. This one cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were given power to damage the land and the sea. Do not damage the land or the sea or the trees until we put the seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who had been marked with the seal, 144,000 marked from every tribe of the children of Israel. After this, I had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hand. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation comes from our God, who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. All the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They prostrated themselves before the throne, worshipped God, and exclaimed, Amen. Blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor, power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders spoke up and said to me, Who are these wearing white robes, and where did they come from? I said to him, my Lord, you are the one who knows. He said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Responsorial Psalm Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, Lord this, this is, is the people, people that longs to see your face. face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For the Lord founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or may stand in that holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is in vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. 
They shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God, their Savior. Such is the race that seeks the Lord, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob, Rachel, and Leah. Lord, Lord this, this is the people that longs to see your face. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not been yet revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope based on him makes themselves pure as he is pure. This, my family, is God's word to us. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus saw the crowds. He went up in the mountain. And after he had sat down, the disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek, they'll inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they'll be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, they'll be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, they'll see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they'll be called children of God. And blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, theirs are the kingdom of heaven. And bless you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. There's a very, very old joke about a bad day. And a bad day is you're standing in line at the pearly gates and Mother Teresa is in front of you. And you hear St. Peter say to Mother Teresa, I'm so sorry, Mother, if you only could have done more for the poor. I'm sure I'm going to get in trouble theologically for what I'm about to say, but we don't talk much about, about um, purgatory anymore. And limbo is in limbo, kind of. But what is purgatory? Is it that burning away of sin that we often, you know, that Dante's probably ruined uh, heaven and hell and purgatory for all of us, because that's how we kind of vision it. But my thought about purgatory always is what happens when you meet God face to face? Part of it, most of it's forgiveness, I think. But part of it is looking at our life with God and seeing perfectly, seeing everything honestly, to seeing everything we did to see what would have been the right way, the best way to act it in any situation, the loving way, the way that would make the world a better place. This is also the source of my Catholic guilt, too. I have to admit that. Benedictines have destroyed me forever when it comes to guilt. But what it is, to see how our decisions could have changed the world and we didn't do them. It's like, oh my God, you could have done this, you could have done that. And that sense of sadness over our own failure, that sense of what could have been that we didn't do, that complete understanding, but then to be forgiven. And God says, there you go, don't worry about it, I forgive you. And to come to that total understanding and feel that total sense of forgiveness come over us. And some people say, well, that's not punishment enough, but when you're really ashamed, is there any greater eternity in the world than to stand in shame before someone else? Not because, because of something you actually did wrong. Maybe I'm overdoing it with this description. But I think that's purgatory, coming to awareness and then feeling forgiveness. What made me think of this was the opening prayer here. It says, we bestow on us, we pray through the prayers of so many intercessors. But that means those who've gone before us have undergone that introduction to pure understanding, to pure love, to pure forgiveness, pure mercy. And now they're on God's side and they know us inside. They know us better than we ever knew ourselves. Think about that. 
Think about all the rotten things you did. Now you know your parents know all about it. You can't hide it anymore. But they're intercessors. They are on our side. They want us to be with them. They want us to be the best person we have. We have all these people praying for us. Because what we celebrate today is that they have been reconciled to God. They are alive, as alive as they've ever been. And they want us to be celebrating for them the king, forever in God's kingdom. So we remember them today. We remember we are beloved. And we use as a reading the Beatitudes. Because the Beatitudes, you know, if you've ever been to one of my funerals, my homily, I always say, the Beatitudes are both a promise and a challenge. The promise is we're going to get there. We are going to be reconciled. We are finally going to live together in peace in God's kingdom. All those differences, all that stuff that kept us from being the loving person we have has been destroyed, and we have been reborn in a whole new way. The challenge is that we're supposed to try to do that well here on earth, and our, we use the Beatitudes as a place to mirror who we are, what we should be, and what we can be and to try to live up to it, to create the kingdom of God, to create that beautiful, beloved community, to be part of that celestial meal where we sit down in peace with each other. So today is a day we remember those who have gone before us, our saints, the ones who gave us life, the ones who were there for us in this world, even the ones who weren't perfectly there. They have been transformed. They're out to get us in a good way. We believe they're okay, and we believe that one day we will be with them but we also believe that our challenge in this life is to become the best that we can be so that we don't have to hold our head in shame when St. Peter says, how would you do? Did you do the best you could? Was your path on earth one as mixed up and screwed up as it can be, but was it because of your life that things are better, that the Beatitudes have come alive in the world? It's a challenge and a promise. The promises will get there. The challenges we have to create that world that we want to have happen so that heaven and earth is merely a transition from one place to the other where we already recognize a world that we created with God. So today is a day of great celebration. We believe in the resurrection. Also today, a great challenge. How do we get there? How do we best help to make that world? So let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son and Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he arose again from the dead and ascended to heaven. And he's seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us ask the Lord and our intercessors on our behalf the prayers for this community, for the world. We pray for the beloved community of the living and the dead, for all those with whom we journey now, and for all our beloved who have gone before us into the fullness of God's love. We know that they light our way home. God of life, hear us. God, God of life, life hear, hear us. us. For our nation in this upcoming election and in the days to come, that we may reclaim our shared humanity and our commitment to one another as the family of God and work together to root out racism and oppression and injustice. God of peace, hear us. God of, God of peace, peace, hear us. Hear us. For our church, and for the sliver of light offered by Pope Francis in recent comments about the unions of LGBTQ people. May we celebrate love and commitment in as many forms as God gives us. God of love, hear us. God of, God love, of love, hear, hear us. us. For all those suffering from COVID-19 in body, mind, and spirit, in isolation, and in financial hardship, may we take the best care of one another that we can especially by taking as many precautions as we can ourselves. God of compassion, hear us. God of, God of compassion, compassion, hear, hear us. us. And for the people of Joan of Arc, for all those who have worked tirelessly, especially during this election season, to be prophetic voices of hope and courage, lifting up the vision of your kingdom, O God, and the reality of a future where everyone will thrive. 
God of joy, hear us. God of, God of joy, joy hear, hear us. us. We ask all these prayers in the name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 As we remember those who have gone before us today, we have a number of photos of those who have passed. And as we look and remember those people who we see on the, before us, we have a song, Every Time I Remember You. So let's listen to the song, and then if you're like me, be kind of shocked by how many people we have left and lost this year. And blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made, it will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, through the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and your sacrifice, that they may be acceptable to God in heaven. May the, the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for, for the praise and glory of God's, God's name, name, for our good and good of all God's, God's church. church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. To truly right and just are doing their salvation always and ever to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, and mighty eternal God. For today, we, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith. Rejoice in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church to whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the font of all holiness. Let your Holy Spirit come upon these gifts like the dew falls, so they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. At the time he was betrayed, he willingly entered into his passion, and taking bread, he blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. At the same time, or in a similar way, when supper was ended, 
He took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is died. Christ, Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, give you thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. How we pray that by taking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by his Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness together, fullness of charity together with Pope Francis, with our Bishop uh, Bernard, and all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and the entire people that your son has gained for you. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All have died in your mercy. Welcome into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, all the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we merit to be cohorts to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 With confidence now, let us pray the prayer which your Savior gave to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. We ask him not to look at our sins, but on the faith of his church and grant to us the peace and the unity of his kingdom where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each of you. And with your spirit. Peace, 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 peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God. This is Jesus Christ. Happy are we to be called to a supper. Lord, I'm not worthy to enter on my roof, his roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness and the fullness of your love, we pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Let us together now pray our, our prayer for peace. God of peace, be, be with those, those who guide, guide the destinies of the, of the world, world so that an end may come to boasting and arrogance. Give them the courage to speak the truth and the humility to listen. Help us to put the good of others above our own ambition so that we may be freed from the burden of fear, the weight of suspicion, and may come to trust each other and live in peace. Amen. Once again, thank you for being here with us to celebrate this great feast day. Uh, the great um, political feast day is coming this week in which we go out and vote and choose our leadership for the coming years. A number of people ask, well, who are you going to vote for? And I'm not going to tell you. 
If you haven't figured it out by now, I must not be preaching very good. But you also, why don't you tell people how to vote? No, I'm not going to tell St. Jones people how to vote. They vote however they want. They're not going to listen to me. But vote. That's the most important thing. There's a song we sing here called, Yes, 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 yes. So I say, vote, 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 vote. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for being here. Vote. Oh.